On va donc repasser en français. So now back to Shakespeare. Um, and over to Joy Manuel for the next sequence in our agenda tonight with, as you can see here, an update on the ESTA initiative. Joy Manuel, over to you. Thank you, Stefan. So the ESTA initiative, what is this about? To tell you about this, we have Etienne Candel. Etienne Candel. Good evening. So, to put this into perspective, thank you, Philip, thank you, Stefan, thank you, Aurelia and Yang Wang, for helping us uh, with this uh, demonstration. But Etienne will certainly agree that we have seen here a um, um, browsing demonstration for the frozen site, but outside. Uh, eating duck at the orange, we are lacking uh, in examples of usages for the fragrance technology and the fragrance science. So, Etienne, thank you for coming tonight to tell us about this uh, ESTA initiative. Could you tell us by um, telling us about you, your profile, your background? So, my job is I'm a lecturer and research worker at CELSA at the Sorbonne University in Paris, and I'm a, a researcher in communications um, uh, area uh, in two places at GRIPIC, in, which is a group, a research group on uh, information and communication processes at uh, the Sorbonne University and ICC, the CNS, which is the, uh, the Institute of Sciences of Communication Sciences at the CNS. So, I'm a research worker. I'm not a part of OP3F team. So ESTA is a third-party initiative outside OP3F team. So can you tell us what this is about? Well, it's a group of people that was set up around the discovery that we made of uh, the, this uh, technology of yours. We are all um, very enthusiastic about uh, this uh, technology and this project, and we are a group of about 10 people with different um, backgrounds and profiles, communications, uh, researchers, uh, com communicators, graphists, web designers, and so on. So you like contributors to the development of the programs and technology. Maybe we'll talk about this later. What is a contribution to the programs and technology. But could you tell us briefly how this uh, group uh, came about and uh, this n idea of working and thinking about the program sites and technology? Yes, we got together because we all shared. I think everybody shares this uh, expectation, this frustration about what are the program sites. Or were the program and what they and how they could be used. So we got together to think about how uh, uh, this could be developed with um, OP3FT about how the type of potential type of uses of uh, the programs, the program sites, to try and see what could be the place of this technology in society at large. What we'd like to know in, is to think of, uh, in terms of applications or what we could call the ex social acceptability of this type of technology. So based or fr from the moment we got together, we started thinking about uh, all these and started uh, working with OP3FT, um, contributing our knowledge, our approach, which is anchored in an analysis of society and potential uses. So it's both geared to help OP3FT, but also the users, and you decided to call yourself Esther. So it's both a reference to the asterisk, the star sign, which is a rather uh, emblematic uh, sign for the technology, and also because we would like to um, some new applications to, uh, and uses to come about, and Esther is a beautiful flower, so we would like it to blossom. When you said that, you, when you discovered the fragrance technology and science, you felt some form of frustration, but apart from this frustration, what uh, did, what is it that you liked about it? Well, the 
recurrent promise we had about the security, safety, but if we uh, uh, think about what it can be, could be, and what it could look like, we got an idea just now with the prototypes. So the promise of the Frogans technology is to deploy or unleash a form of uh, creativity that is not limited by uh, forms and shapes. And what we are looking at, more importantly, is this creative potential, which is uh, built into, embedded in the name Esther, aesthetics. You see, we would like to experiment on this, propose different types of uh, uh, things, uh, not prototypes, uh, or go beyond the prototypes uh, that we've seen tonight. Uh, we have the certainty that there are graphic uh, original th graphics that can be uh, developed and we can work from a more artistic point or angle. More generally speaking, we see also that there are constraints, lim limitations. We see that it's a small format. So this size uh, is uh, good for interoperability and, and avoid scrolling, but to uh, consult, look up a scientific paper. It's certainly better to be on a website and and just scroll through the paper and do full text research. Where a frozen site is not adapted for this type of usage. And there, if you, there's also the notion of metagenics. There's a photogenic is something that is, looks good on the photo. photo. Metagenic is what looks good for a particular media. Um, uh, short news, uh, for instance, uh, will work in a particular context. So what will be more appropriate for an object of this size with this type of uh, browsing, navigation, this type of, of medium and, and potential use? So that's what we think about, the, the actual usages of this uh, technology. So the metagenics of uh, the program science. Um, have you and your group uh, any idea of what will work well with program science? Well, what we started doing is to think uh, of uh, certain types of objects that would be representative of what can be done when you communicate. And that could uh, be well adapted both to creative opportunities or communication-related opportunities and to the constraints of limitations of the technology so that you would um, rule out uh, forms like a thesis, but we could look for smaller objects such as uh, why not uh, have a flyer uh, with Frogans. What would a Frogans uh, type of flyer look like? What would be an activable uh, um, zone, uh, how can you write a flyer? We take flyer because that's one, there's a, there's a promise in a flyer. And there's something about consi the con that uh, is about consistency. A flyer should be identical on all uh, media, uh, on all devices. Uh, we also started thinking about other things. In Philip Collins' uh, presentation, we had a, a p potential navigation route, uh, but you need to uh, think about the way to activate, like a slideshow. For instance, what a slideshow uh, under Frogans look like in view of its uh, possibilities and uh, constraints, and also the capability of the Frogans site to refresh themselves. It means that we can think of. Um, object like a feed, a timeline, to uh, like a, a news of feed. For instance, you could uh, follow a sports uh, competition while you're working, and the the the, the feed will be updated uh, as and when uh, things happen. So uh, you can a more programmatic or programmatic or abstract approach, and we can gradually move uh, to kind of modeling approach, which is show, practically speaking, what can be done with this type of project. But at this point in time, we're not in the production phase. We're just in the more, uh, we're getting to terms, coming to terms with the 
potential usage of uh, this uh, technology and, and the science in, in the world. Thank you, Tian. So this uh, work you're conducting, which you will be continuing to conduct, uh, what, who is it intended for? Well, the first mm, world uh, we work with is OP3FT. We started working with you, uh, uh, interacting with you, analyzing, making proposals. Therefore, we uh, have a s contributor status with you. We provide OP3FT with a vision which is more anchored in usage and, and society, less in uh, development. This is not our business to uh, do development. Uh, we just stand as representatives of society. Uh, we also think uh, as a second option, as a group, and, and uh, locus for um, uh, reflecting on these, uh, we can act as an intermediary between um, uh, the society at large and, uh, and uh, be thrifty. those who will be working on frozen site on the one hand and the end users at the other end of the spectrum who will be using these as uh, uh, users of digital devices. So we have three uh, audiences, OB3FG, and, and, uh, and the, the other two worlds we can mention. So in the future, all people interested by or in uh, frozen sites and the users can uh, turn to Esther not all at the same time, hopefully. No. And uh, precisely in the near future, how do you see that you can turn this into actions. As I said earlier, we have a first phase, which is quite naturally one of, a, uh, like a think tank, putting together some uh, methodologies and doing some experimentation. We are very keen to experiment. We want this to be done very freely, to propose forms and shapes, see what can be uh, fun, uh, shocking, provocative, maybe, or maybe that is bound to fail. Um, in the way we formalize the objects and come up with a potential object. The second um, approach uh, that uh, takes us to work with you is, is the working on the interface for programs, uh, programs of players, uh, the analysis of gestures, of, of uh, uh, the motions on the pad, uh, on this, how can they be turned into more economic, maybe um, movements or interpret or movements that can be understood by the people, because otherwise it could have other meanings. And also, we need to work on the vocabulary, because the vocabulary is key in taking ownership of techniques in general. We know that. Metaphors like a page, a site, or a desktop can impact the social acceptance of IT, just like we also need to work on how usage emerges from words, proposing other words, therefore, as a part in view of what you're developing at OP3FT. So embarking upon a vocabulary that's specific to this site so that the company can also know what it's all about and how to use it, creating uses from the vocabulary. Etienne, wonderful. And all of that with an open mind, with contributions that could help the program's progress, uh, program's technology to move forward and that to be useful for users. The Aster website address is on the screen. You can contact him. I hope you'll be seeing your team on stage at a forthcoming conference and that we'll be able to see your modeling, your trials at the next conference. We'll be at the next conference to present our work. Okay, so see you there. And I would really love to see it. And to all the initiatives out there interested in programs, technologies, addresses, usage, business model, utility, 
associative models, models for developing creativity in general. OP3FT is open to all of that. And of course, OP3FT will do its best to, to take you on board in a more overall approach to Frogan's technology. So we have a discussion list, Twitter, and do not hesitate to come and talk to us to exchange your contacts. And of course, you'll be extremely happy to be able to speak with you. Thank you, Etienne, and thank you, Esther, and see you at the next conference.